Hey, it's Marco from Craft Coffee Spot. We recently learned the Breville Barista Express runs at a much higher pressure than the newer Breville model. So today I want to show you how to modify the Breville Barista Express and reduce the pressure by changing the OBV. This will actually lead to a lot better espresso and make this machine easier to use. It only takes about 30 minutes or so and you need a few tools, just a Phillips head screwdriver, a smaller flathead screwdriver, and then a zip tie. Now I'll make one disclaimer. If you do open up your machine, you can void your warranty with Breville. So this video is for educational purposes only. On the other hand, you may find yourself going down a fun rabbit hole as I've already opened up several other machines after doing this mod. So now we're going to open up the machine. First off, make sure it's unplugged and cool. And then we're going to take everything off. The bean hopper, the tamper, the water tank, the drip tray, and the hidden compartment too. Okay, so now we're going to start taking the screws out of this. There are 12 screws in total. Two in the front, one right here with a hot water spout, and one by the tamper. Four underneath the back, two of which are visible, two of which are hidden. And then there's going to be six along the back panel. Let's first take out the screws in the front. <laughs> Make sure you hold on to all these screws. <laughs> that is out. I gotta go to the four screws underneath the back. So there are six screws in the back panel. Five are visible along the top, then you have one right down here in the base. There is a cap that is on that screw on the base. Getting this cap off takes some work. Use your flathead screwdriver. I actually have to use a knife and the flathead to pry it off. Maybe you have a sewing needle or some type of sewing hook that can actually really help here. But just be patient and pry this one off. Probably also have to tip the machine on the side to get this screw out. Final five screws in the top back. Okay, now we can take off the panels. The top panel will come off pretty easily. You can unclip this. Taking off the back panel is probably the scariest part. There are clips along the side that are locked in pretty tightly, and you just need to make sure you pull steadily and be patient and just keep opening slowly with increasing force, and eventually these will unclip. If you just rip it off, you can break the clip. So be patient, be steady, it will come off. Okay, so now we're in. This is the fun part, because you can see how the espresso machine works. A basic schematic is you have your water intake right here, comes into the flow meter, through this vibratory pump, and then it comes up here, and this is your thermal coil. You can see the cold water comes in up top, and then this is your heated element, it kind of spins around here, gets heated, and then your brew head is right underneath here. Now, what we care about is this little T right here in between the pump and the thermal coil. This is the overpressure valve. So the pump runs at a really high pressure, and this screw actually releases some water back into the drip tray. Now, the thing is, this is on too tight, so we want to unscrew it a little bit to relieve more pressure. To do that, you need to take off the zip tie. The best way I found to do it is to use a small flathead screwdriver and just slide it underneath. Now you have some space, you can just cut it off with scissors. Okay, now I just wanna slide this tube off, okay? Take the tube off and take off this clip right here. Okay, now we want to unscrew this, which is the overpressure valve. Now, before you do, I recommend marking this. So if you look here, I took a knife and I actually scored this right here. If you can actually on the other side, there's a small marking from the factory setting. So just have that marking so you know how many turns you're gonna do because you can probably only unscrew this two to two and a half rotations before it falls off. 
So you obviously don't want it to fall off. You want to still make sure it's on there tightly. And so I found a two to two and a half rotations is probably the best you can do. So we'll go full two and a half rotations here. The lighting's so good here. Let's see exactly how much to rotate it. It's one. That is two rotations. So glad I have this mark here because it's so much easier to follow. Two. So that's about two and a quarter turns what I did. So now we're done and we want to put everything back together. I'll put the clip back on, then put the tube on, use a zip tie to keep it in place, and then close up the cover. Okay, so I've closed up the machine and put the top panel on, the back panel on. I just put one screw in to hold it together because I first wanted to test it. And when I tested the pressure with our homemade pressure gauge, it went all the way up to 12 bars. So down from what was 14 to 15 bars. Now I can't get it down to nine bars because if I unscrew that over pressure valve any further, it's gonna fall off. So 12 bars is about the best I can get. If you are testing this at home, you can just actually put your blind basket in the portafilter and put that in and know that every mark on this pressure gauge is about two bars. Now, even though we couldn't get down to nine bars, I think what's more important is how does it taste now? So let's brew one espresso. Okay, so this tastes a lot smoother. I've modded this machine several times, going down on 12 bars, then back up to the original pressure, and then back down today. And I can tell you the biggest difference is it just tastes a lot more balanced, a lot smoother. Before, when I reviewed the Breville Barista Express, I was critical that it tasted too sharp. There's too much sourness, too much bitterness. And now a lot of that extreme is kind of muted, and you just get a more balanced, more clean flavor profile here. So I think it tastes a lot better, even at 12 bars. Now, the other thing I found is that the Breville Barista Express is just easier to use. Before, I was really critical of the limited grind settings here, and I found you only had one or two settings where you could really get a good shot. Now, I found with a lower pressure, the Barista Express actually flows a little slower at a coarser grind setting, but actually flows a little faster at the finer grind setting. Turns out that when you're at really high pressure, it actually causes too much turbulence in the puck and actually chokes up the espresso puck when you get to a fine setting. So now suddenly I feel like I can just have more access to a different range of grind sizes and it's just a lot more forgiving. So that just makes this machine a lot easier to use too. So on two factors on taste and just easy use, this mod helps a lot. Now, what about the other Breville machines? Well, I have not modified the Burst the Pro, although the pressure there was closer to 10 or 11 bars. So it's already still lower than Burst the Express. I did modify my Gaja Classic Pro, where I changed it from 12 bars down to nine bars by changing the spring. And I felt like the taste difference wasn't as noticeable as it was with this. I think maybe it tells you that nine to 12 bars is sort of optimal, closer to nine being better than 12, but certainly being at 12 bars like this mod is a lot better than what it was originally at 14 to 15 bars. So if you have 20 or 30 minutes, I really recommend doing this. It doesn't take many tools. And once you do it once, it is a lot better and a lot easier to use. I'm going to actually put some photos up on our site, Craft Coffee Spots. So you can find more details there. And if you have any feedback, let me know in the comments below. I want to hear if this actually worked for you. As always, I hope this video helped. If it did, maybe consider giving this a like as it really supports our channel. And as always, subscribe to see our future videos.